today with Mats Carlson from Ericsson. Mats, perhaps to start us off, a little why about why we're here today and also your role at Ericsson. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, I'm heading up the BSS and OSS uh, products within uh, Ericsson and uh, the reason why we're here today is that Ericsson is today launching the Ericsson service and orchestration and assurance products and as well uh, the connected solution that we call Ericsson Dynamic Network Slicing. Fantastic, excited to dive into this and really kind of the why this matters so much. So what's fueling this innovation in service orchestration and also service assurance? Perhaps some of those key drivers would be a great starting point. Uh, yes, obviously the introduction of, of the 5G architecture and of course the, the introduction of network slicing technologies will of course open up for a lot of new services, uh, more what we call differentiated connectivity services. And this will of course uh, make sure that you can, for instance, drive new revenue opportunity, especially in the, in the enterprise segment. Uh, I think the reason also why uh, we are launching the product on the connected solution is that you need to be able to handle these type of services at scale, both in terms of handling them in, in the network and manage the services in the network, but as well, I mean, how do you handle the business at scale? How do you make it easy to define and deploy and operate these services? Super interesting. I think it brings to the fore for me as well, kind of the age of convergence we're in. So convergence of catalyst you mentioned there, Mats, but also convergence of benefits as well. And I have to mention it, I think everywhere we're talking about generative AI, aren't we? But obviously we want to do that with substance, but just reflecting on that, do you see this? Because for me, I think certainly nascent opportunities coming here from generative AI as another catalyst for why this matters so much too. Uh, definitely. I mean, still to say, um, I think generative AI is in the early days. Uh, I think we are actually doing a lot of efforts on our side, uh, both in terms of how to use generative AI in, in our development or in our process, but also in the products actually. Uh, I think one of the things we are evaluating is to use generative AI as a smart interface to our products. I mean, to help you guide you through an advanced configuration of the product, or actually to do advanced data retrieval of the product, or, or even uh, like specify intent, for instance, in service orchestration. Uh, I think we, have, we actually had a, a showcase where we were actually using generative AI to actually in our analytics products to making sure that how can you simplify their data retrieval, how can you actually put real advanced questions uh, in natural language speaking to the product. Uh, so I think there is a big potential and I think there is something we are looking into. I love that and I think a demo I think really brings that to the fore and kind of when we're talking there I'm also thinking that kind of the rise of personalised precision slicing. That's what came to mind when you were talking there through AI, so I love to see where that goes. Um, but also again, bringing this to life with examples, so looking at both sides, both orchestration and assurance, perhaps we could share an example of what you've done already and who you're working with, but also how you've addressed the challenges and how the benefits, the opportunities can be harnessed through this innovation you're fueling here. Uh, definitely, I think Ericsson, uh, we already have, uh, I think, 18 signed contracts and, and we have concluded 32 uh, proof of concepts with operators. Obviously, very different type of use cases. Uh, I mean, I mean, something could be, for instance, setting up uh, dedicated communication as a Formula One race. Uh, it can be a, all kind of quality on demand setup, etc. And of course, there is a lot of opportunities around this, uh, and I think there is also uh, very much the need to be a use case driven approach. Uh, and of course. What we also see is that, uh, I mean, even if there is a lot of opportunities, there is also a lot of challenges. I think, uh, I mean, how do you actually do this in a, in a simple way? It can't take months or weeks to uh, define a new service. It needs to be done in, in, I would say, in minutes or seconds, even. Uh, so we also need to actually make sure that this is easier handled, uh, the, the, that we are abstracting away the complexity of the network, that we're making it easy to actually define and deploy this uh, type of new services. And obviously, I think one of the cases we have been working, for instance, very close with uh, is with Telia uh, on their uh, digital transformation. Uh, and I think what is important for them is really to get the, uh, the cost obviously down, but also the speed up in actually managing and deploying new services. So I think there we are actually looking, I mean, how can you reduce the time to introduce any services from weeks to minutes? How can you reduce the fallout so you, either that you're trying to deploy a service and it doesn't work? And how can you be much faster in here creating new services? And of course, this also helps a lot on the user creation side and the user experience side. 
Absolutely. Again, I think it brings to the fore the shared value benefits that you can achieve here. A, so many different examples there from performance to efficiency, but also the sustainability examples there as well. So again, a convergence of opportunity, I think, here too. And, and on that, how that's as well, perhaps to end it, and you mentioned the two big announcements that have come to the fore today, perhaps with the drill on this, how Ericsson's really supporting this innovation path and just get focusing on that area as we close today. Absolutely, and uh, I've tried to summarize, I think, in, in, uh, in like three, major imperatives. Uh, one is like, how can we help the operator to commercialize new services in a very quick and efficient way? The other one, how can we operationalize, uh, for instance, more complex functions like network slicing? And the other ones is the, how do we achieve uh, economies of scale to industrialization? And obviously, this is very much about making it easy to define and deploy new services, and of course, making sure that you can actually manage uh, the network and make the most efficient use of the network resources that you have. And of course that it should be very quick to understand whether you are making business out of this use case or not and then you can try another one. So you need to have the flexibility and the agility and you need to remove the complexity. Love that. Thank you, Matt. So many recurring themes there, that need for active intelligence, that ample dexterity to change, as you were mentioning there as well. And again, those shared value benefits that we're all really endeavouring to achieve. Matt, and so much more on this, I know. We'll also share links to the demo you mentioned, which I think mm. is excellent, brings to life all these benefits and the case studies you mentioned as well. Because again, I think visibility really, really matters to make a change. So that's all from us for now. But join us again for another episode too, and all through MWC24 content. Thanks very much. I've been Sally East. And that, thank you very much. Thank you.